Hey, welcome everybody to our crew real estate investing seminar. Um, how real estate can get can help you get ahead and pay off debt. Um, we've really, really looking been looking forward to this seminar because um, when times get tough, like interest rates going up as high as they are, inflation is going up as high as it is. If you have some real estate in the background, you can actually use it to pay off debt. And we're gonna get really, really into that as the seminar goes on. Yeah, and we love this topic just because we know the market goes up and down. We live in Calgary by all means. And um, we've actually used real estate, Tim, to support us through many times. Yeah. So we can't wait to get into what our investors are doing, how they're scaling their business, and of course, how they're living the life they want to live because of the real estate they own and, and how you can do it too. So it's an awesome seminar. Tim and I have been doing this for close to 20 years. Yeah. Um, if it's your first time joining us, we have over 5,000 people on Meetup. We do these seminars every second week and we run different topics that we believe will help you. Why do we do this? We simply do it so if you think of real estate, you think of us. We buy and sell real estate for our clients investment real estate is our passion but we sell tim luxury homes we sell small condos we sell commercial we sell land so we do a lot of different things and then of course on the investment side that's where we get really creative and we do things like lease options rent to own uh, airbnb agreements for sale um, we put joint ventures together. We actually team people up. We do flips. We run all of the numbers. So the difference between Tim and I, when we're shopping for real estate for you, we're making sure 100% that it's going to make you money. That's what we do for a living. And we love it because when we make our clients money, they're clients for life. Uh, we don't have to send them a birthday card to say, hey, we're your realtor. They know where you're, they're, where their realtors because we've made them a lot of money. And on average right now, Tim, our clients are making a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars per property since they've bought them yeah. with us. So it doesn't matter if it's for a flip. It doesn't matter if it's for the birth strategy, um, where people reach out to us for all different strategies. And the difference in what we do with these strategies, Tim, is we tell people if it's the right strategy or not. Um, we tell you the truth on if the strategy takes a lot of effort uh, and we point you in the right direction so you do make money and you make it easily. Yeah, so this seminar, How Real Estate Can Help Me Pay Off Debt and Get Ahead, um, is, like I said at the beginning, it's a really good topic and we're going to go through some strategies to help you pay off debt. But when, as I was mentioning clients for life, this couple on the front here, Kyle and Marilla, they used one of the strategies that we're going to talk about in selling a property to pay off debt. And they used yeah. their, their uh, credit to buy their dream home, which is a really, really big house in Oak Ridge. They had to get rid of a smaller rental property, but it was a strategy mm -hmm. to use to pay off some debt so that they could get what they wanted. How real estate can help you pay off debt and get ahead. Uh, we're going to go over no, numerous strategies that you can use your real estate or acquire real estate and then use it to pay off debt so that, you know, you're not drowning in debt. Danielle's example showed, you know, a number of credit cards that had debt on them. And I'm sure a lot of people out there have, you know, built up credit card debt or lines of credit over time mm -hmm. um, as inflation has started to rise because everything's getting more expensive and maybe your income isn't keeping up with that inflation. So we're going to show you a certain strategies that can help you pay off that debt and get ahead. All right, the number or one of the first things we're going to talk about is a HELOC. Mm -hmm. Now it's similar to refinancing, but it's a line of credit. Mm -hmm. And what does the HE part stand for? It's a home equity line of credit. So basically it's a line of credit um, attached to your home that you can draw down or pay off mm -hmm. however you wish, but you can access that money and you can use that to pay off debt. Yeah, so uh, you don't need to get rid of that first mortgage you've got. We need you to understand what a HELOC is. You could actually go to the bank and get the property appraised and just a tip on appraisals. As Daniel said, if there's a property selling higher on your street, you take the highest price. And that's what us realtors afford is to give you those comps. We're doing this day in, day out. I just did four um, uh, appraisals for uh, my midwife, actually, Helen, who's bought lots of in investment properties through us. And Daniel was looking at refinancing the whole portfolio. So I gave her values and I was pull pulling values on her area up in Aspen. And, and comparable sizes, but I was getting the highest 
prices so she could pull as much equity out as need be. And that is the secret when you're investing in real estate. That HELOC or that money you pull out, you only want to take enough money that the rent will cover those costs. Okay, so you don't want to, you don't really want to take out more money where it's just going to sink you even more, right? You want to take out just enough where the rents will cover those costs. You would have to go on rent faster to work out what current rents are. And then you pull that money out to pay down debt or reposition yourself, or better still, what Tim and I have done in the past is use that money to grow your portfolio, to actually get into another property, use some of it to pay down debt, use some of it to do renovations, use some of it to go on holidays, but don't do what some of our clients have done and go buy a speedboat or sorry, a wakeboarding boat or put a pool in the backyard. If you're going to do that, that's fine, but at least buy another asset, at least maybe upgrade. You've seen people too yeah. now, we've done it, upgrade where you're currently living with those funds. Yeah, and the good thing about a HELOC is the interest rate is quite a bit lower than some other debt uh, vehicles out there. So your HELOC could be at seven, eight, nine percent, depending on what you qualify for, depending on what your credit is. Um, you could say get a $40,000 HELOC put on your home and if you have $20,000 of credit card debt and that credit card debt is at 24%, you can wipe that out and just pay the interest portion of the HELOC because with a HELOC, you don't have to pay interest in principal. You just have to pay the interest on the amount that's that's owing every month. Yeah. So you don't have to borrow right up to the 40 grand. If you only borrow 20 to pay off your credit cards, you're paying you know 8% interest, just the interest only payment on that HELOC. Yeah. So it's a great way to lower your costs. You're paying off your bad debt, your credit card debt, and you're using good debt because it's a uh, home equity. Mm -hmm. You're using that to give yourself more room yeah. and you know you can you have more room to live and guess who's paying for that the tenants are so yeah. you have to make sure that the cash flow is there from the properties or you have to make sure that the numbers make sense but that is borrowing off your real estate to keep you afloat or keep you going. And then you have to have a plan on how you're going to pay that back. And normally they're only going to give you so much on your HELOC. There will always be equity in those properties. And we have clients that actually, they don't, they don't ever want to pay the properties back. They will refinance the properties up to a point and use that money as their income. Right. And so it's not for every investor, but they will use that as their income because it's tax free dollars when you refinance money, borrowed funds. So you don't pay any tax on it. And they use that to acquire more real estate um, and to support their lifestyle as well. So Helox is a massive tool for the experienced investors out there. Yeah. And the next thing that we're going to talk about is just a second mortgage. Um, a second mortgage is exactly the same as a first mortgage, but it's for quite a bit less. Because even with that second mortgage on your property, you can still only finance the property up to 80% of its value. So if your mortgage goes to 75% you know, of the value, you can only borrow 5% more as a second mortgage, a totally complete mortgage on that property. And the thing about a second mortgage, it's called a second mortgage because it's in second place. Mm -hmm. If the property eventually or somehow goes into foreclosure, the first mortgage is paid off first, the second mortgage is paid off after that. And anyone else owing is yeah. paid off after that. So that's why it's called the second mortgage. But you go through the same qualifying process as you do as the first, but it's for quite a bit less. And you can use that. It, it basically becomes cash. Cash, yeah. yeah. And the thing about the difference between a second mortgage and a HELOC is that the second mortgage is actually getting paid down. The principal is getting paid down. So it will make you feel a little bit better yeah. if that's the way you want to go. But it's another source of funds that you may think wasn't available. Yeah. Um, and further to that question about corporations, um, back in the day, I was taking second mortgages out of my company name on the properties that I own, but the banks put a kibosh on that after the, the financial crisis of 2008, so you can't do that anymore unless you personally guarantee everything that you do now. Yeah. He looks in a second that, Can I jump in there for one quick yeah. second in a second You're still yes. listening? Normally, normally Danielle takes <laughs> off. Of this. No, no I'm still listening. Bored. I'm she like, this is all mortgage. That. It's all mortgage related. I was like, I should stick around um, for a second mortgage. So I know there's a common misconception with second mortgages too, that they have to be significantly higher interest rates because they're in second place. 
but oftentimes there are a few lenders out there that will allow you to do we still use the word second mortgage, but maybe second component is a better example where you can have your first mortgage. And as long as you go back to that same lender and add on a second mortgage, but they call it a component, then you're still going to get a lending rates and you can still go up to that 80% loan to value. So as long as you qualify, like Tim and his ad mentioned, you don't necessarily have to be in the double digits, like a quote unquote old school you know, second mortgage with a private lender would, would say. Um, so it is also a great option if we are already with a lender uh, that has those components that are able to be added, then it's a fabulous way to not incur a penalty and also take out um, some extra money. So just wanted to throw that in there. No, thanks for the tip. You're the pro. So the next part here is we really wanted to give everybody an avenue to make money today. Okay. And if you've read our book, as we showed you, Fearless Real Estate, there's a quote in here, one of our favorite quotes of all time. If you're not cash flowing, you're not trying. So the best way to increase your income and, and get ahead today would be to rent out a room. That would be the easiest way. Re student rentals, and they might they may not be students, this is what everyone has to understand. There's new people to Canada, to Calgary, that need places to live. And the going rate right now in our city is a thousand bucks. So that could go a long way. If you've got two rooms in your basement that aren't used, maybe the kids have moved out of home. I don't know. I don't know, but you could make a thousand dollars per room. And that could go a long way to reducing your new costs of the current interest rates and inflation and get you back to where we were, you know, a year ago. Yeah, and I was reading an article on the University of Calgary's residence uh, buildings, and they're 100% occupied right now. There was actually a waiting list of something like 1,500 kids waiting to get in there. Um, living in residence at the U of C is going to cost you probably $1,700, $1,800 a month. Um, and what these kids are doing is they're renting rooms off of people and it's only costing them $1,000 to $1,200 a month to rent a room. Mm -hmm. And it's significantly less than if they were living in residence. So if you have a room to offer, now we're, we're not saying everybody go out and do this, but if, if you need that extra cash to pay off some debt or just to live better, um, you can rent out one of the rooms in your house to a student and that's twelve or $1,000 to $1,200 cash in your pocket. Yeah, so that is just one way we want to throw out there for people that are wondering, you know, what that looks like. And, and I'm not saying it's for everybody, but if you are in a bind, like we get these phone calls all, all the time that, you know, like people aren't affording things right now. This is one way you can just stop the bleed yeah. straight off the bat. Okay, moving on. Yeah. The next thing you can do is the BRR strategy. Um, we've got a number of clients doing this right now. What is it for the people out there, the new people out there that don't know about it? It's buy, renovate, rent, refinance, and repeat. So basically when you buy a piece of real estate, a rental property, um, you renovate it right away, you rent it out, and then you refinance it to pull the cash out. Mm -hmm. And while the market's moving up, it's a very, very advant advantageous time to do this because not only are you getting the appreciation from the rentals that you're putting in there, but you're getting the market appreciation as well. So you can pull more money out on that refinance. Yeah, the whole name of the game when you're investing in real estate is just turning your money over. So basically putting it into a property, increasing the value of that property, refinancing that money out and going again. That's what our experienced investors are doing. And you could actually do this, Tim, on an older rental property that you may have. You may see that the term is coming up on the mortgage and you may go add value to it now and then get it refinanced and then rent it out for today's rents. And I could tell you, rents a year ago for a two-bedroom condo downtown were roughly... 1350, maybe 1450. Now they're above 2000. So that is a huge difference. And $600, Tim, actually $650 extra will carry another $100,000 in borrowed funds in your pocket that is tax free. That is absolutely huge. You could go and up, you could go out and upgrade your home. You can go buy another rental property. You could take some time off work with that yeah. sort of money. So what we're talking about is real and we're seeing some of these properties, Tim, get refinanced within a six month period for $80,000 more than what they purchased it for. So it's all about buying that right property and even on small condos, we've got clients doing it, let alone big homes. 
Yeah, so that's one strategy that you can use. The next one we're going to talk about is flipping. Um, flipping is a great way to put cash in your pocket. If you have a lot of debt, you want to put a big dent in that debt, then flipping is for you. Now, we got to stress that it costs a lot of money to flip a property because not only do you have to qualify for the property, put down the down payment, you also have to carry that property and pay for the renovations. Mm -hmm. Now, there's creative ways to pay for those renovations, which we'll talk about, but at the end of the day, when you go to sell that property, there's a huge spread in certain neighborhoods in Calgary. For sure, flipping could be one of them. And if you think that I can't even I can't even lift a hammer, so um, I could tell you flipping, I have to hire everything out, and you can still make money from it. You could actually move into a property and renovate it as you move into it. You could maybe put a suite in the basement, or we're going to get into suites, right? Yeah, yeah. But you could renovate it while you live there. But you know what? It can add value, and if you move into it, guess what? When you sell it, it's tax-free dollars. So we've got we've had single mothers, um, yeah. single mothers and couples and all different people, um, actually lots of different people, do this and make an absolute killing. When we say killing, each one of our investors, I mean, after this seminar, I'm on the phone call with a gentleman that wants to make $100,000 from a property. So I can definitely tell you, that it's doable, especially in this market, um, when there's a massive range. We were in Oak Ridge the other day, right? Yeah. yeah. So the couple with the U-Haul um, van behind them were in Oak Ridge taking possession. That community alone, Tim, how much did you buy that property for? That property was six seventy-five. Yeah, it was six seventy-five, and those properties in there go all the way up to a million dollars. Yeah, so. and over. And over. They have an estate portion that's way over, but yeah. You know, an average property like that will go for a million dollars fully renovated. Yeah. So if and that property didn't even need much work, yeah. like just here and there, right? So you know what? You could go into properties and make it work. Where do you find the money for this? One of our most um, popular strategies is doing mortgage plus improvements. Danielle will um, actually get if you buy for six hundred, she will actually normally get you ten percent more than the purchase price. So another sixty thousand dollars on top of that mortgage to use for your renovations. There's other ways you could use a line of credit. You could bring in a joint venture partner. They could do the renovation side. You could go to Home Depot and get um, a credit card that is eighteen months. Um, interest-free and you could flip it out in that time so there's different ways don't let it hold you back if you're thinking you know I don't have the money to do it if you're moving into it you could put five percent down on the property so there are multiple multiple ways to do it um, we've been doing it forever with our clients and um, and you can make money from it too it's not that but hard. the three things on this on this screen are three things we have to stress if you are flipping property selection, you have to choose the right property in the right neighborhood. Does that mean it has to be in the best neighborhood in the city? No, it doesn't. We have clients flipping all over town. We've got clients flipping in, you know, some of the shabbier neighborhoods mm -hmm. in town, but they're, they're used to that. They understand the clients there. They understand the demographics there. So you choose the right property. Um, you want to choose the property where you're going to get the most spread. And what's the spread? It's what you what an unrenovated property is selling for and what you're going to sell for as a renovated property. We take comparables from the market in the last three months so we can give our clients, you know, up to date numbers on both the unrated, renovated and the renovated so they know what they're getting into. And then the second part, the financial analysis, you need to calculate very, very carefully how much those renovations are going to cost, what materials you're going to use. Um, and how long it's going to take you. That budgeted time, you have to stick with it because nothing kills a flip more than going over budget and over time and wiping out your profit. And the third thing is the renovation strategy. You have to plan it out well before you start so that you can plan You know, the plumbers to come in at the right time, the electricians to come in at the right time, the flooring guys, the drywallers, whatever. You need them coming in at the right time frame so that you can finish this project on time. Yeah, if you're doing a flip through us, we handle every aspect of this. We actually um, do the property selection. So we take out that speculation of where the numbers are going to end up. We make sure that our clients are going to make a minimum of what we tell them. And they normally make way more, which is awesome. And then the financial analysis, we calculate what you should be spending and what should be done in that property to generate the appreciation that we need. Uh, and then we're there for the ride. We've actually got our own contractors. You can use your own. 
And we strongly recommend that you do bring something to the table. We yeah. always say this, even if it's demo work or painting, something bring. And we've seen, Tim, young young guys, young investors get in there and grind it out themselves. They go on YouTube and work <laughs> out how to put the flooring together. I mean, I can't do this, but hats off to these kids that are doing it. Um, they're savvy and they want it and and they they do their baseboards and they do the flooring, right, Tim? Yeah. So fantastic, you know, and you don't have to go to town sometimes. Sometimes you could just paint the, the cabinets and put new pulls on and the place will look brand new. We've even seen people paint the countertops. Yeah, there, oh, there's been advances in paint these days. People can paint bathtubs, they can paint countertops, they can paint brick, they can paint stone. Um, if you research it enough and you do it properly enough, you can change the look of a house with just some paint. Yeah. So um, that's it on the flipping. Next one we're going to move to is Airbnbs. How can that help you pay off debt? Well, similar to renting a room to a student, if you put, say, a, your basement suite on Airbnb in the home you're living in, or you can even put your whole home on Airbnb yeah. and move in with a friend or move in with your family for you know the, the high times, like say in Calgary here, the 10 days of the stampede, mm -hmm. we've had clients make yeah. forty to $50,000 on their home in those 10 days alone. Yeah, crazy stuff. And we didn't know this was possible yeah. through our clients are telling us. We've even got clients that have multiple properties and when one Airbnb is free, they will go sleep there the night and run the other one as an Airbnb. That's how crazy it's getting. And there's money to be made. Um, to set up an Airbnb, you can actually get furniture fairly cheap. I mean, you may be living in your place like Tim said and put on Airbnb, um, but it is another way to actually make money from real estate today, pay down debt, get ahead, or get yourself out of being so tight every month with the finances, yeah. right? And make it happen. So we've we've had we had one couple have an Airbnb in Bankview. <laughs> they had to build a room in the attic. This is for real, okay? Oh, yeah. Like how many how many places did they have in that? Oh, there were okay. three suites basically, and they ended up building converting the attic into their living space. Yeah, they converted the attic into their living space because. Because all the rooms were full, <laughs> and so they would go up. They had to pull the stairs down. We never, we never forget this. We had to see it for ourselves. They would pull the stairs down. And that's where they would go sleep. So they were still yeah, there. And, and Bob was, he was my height. He's six four, and he's in this attic, and he's bent over like this everywhere he's walking around. It was just hilarious. They just loved it though. Yeah. So when we say you got to do what you got to do, I mean it's not for everybody. We need to stress this, and we'll get to some other strategies here, but. But if you're not cash flowing, you're not getting ahead, you may have to sacrifice for a little bit, right? If interest rates are eating you alive right now, or the cost of meat, have you guys seen the cost of meat lately? Like I love steaks, but holy smokes, I don't know if I love meat that much. <laughs> but anyway, um, Airbnb could be an option. And if you're thinking about it, we help our clients run their Airbnbs. And it is a terrific way to make money. Yeah. And the best thing about it, you can block it off when you don't want to use it as an Airbnb, yeah. right? When you don't want to rent it. I love that. We've also had people have um, uh, Airbnbs in their basement. So they live upstairs and they just put it on Airbnb. We were in one the other day and the guy rents all the furniture. Yeah, you don't have to buy your furniture. <laughs> we were literally walking around the house and going, that end table, that's five bucks a month. You know, that coffee table, that's 10 bucks a month. That bed, that's $30 a month. He named every single piece of furniture in his house that he's renting. We couldn't believe it. We didn't know. We couldn't believe it. And the furniture was good. Like, yeah. But it came apart very easily. He told me one guy came to set it all up and, and it was unbelievable. Okay, we'll go to the next slide here. So the next one, what else can you do to, to pay off debt and get ahead? Well, you can put a suite in your house. And does it have to be a basement suite? No, it can be a garden suite in the backyard. It can be a suite above the garage. Mm -hmm. Just putting that suite in, you're adding rental income that you didn't have before. Yeah, putting a suite in also adds value to your property, but it's going to generate basement suites, you know, that are appealing are going for around $1,500 per month. That's a lot of money. That will take care of any increases you've had on your interest rates. If you have a $500,000, $600,000 mortgage, that $1,500 will almost wipe out that increase and get, get you back to where you were. Um, and you know what? Putting a suite in, you choose your tenant. So, yeah. so that's the best thing. And if you do turn it into a legal suite, we do help our clients do that. We have contractors that do that all day long. But 
it, it can increase your property value by 50, 60, $70,000 because people will pay later on for a legal suite of property. Yeah. So moving on again, uh, the next one, what can you do to pay off debt? Well, if worse comes to worse, you're really stuck. You can always sell a property. Uh, we spoke about the couple in the beginning there, the first slide, they sold a rental property to get into their dream home. Well, if these rising interest rates are starting to weigh down on you, on you know your principal residence, you have a couple of rentals in the background, it may come to it that you have to sell one. We never ever want people to sell their rental properties, but if you have to, guess what? You have to. It can relieve your mm -hmm. debt situation so much, um, simplify your financial life, uh, and sort of let you ride through these tough times. And as Ed and I have done this over the last 20 years, sometimes we have to sell a rental property as well because interest rates go up too high or the vacancy rate gets, you know, it's too hard to rent out places. The economy fluctuates, uh, interest rates fl fluctuate, rental rates fluctuate. So sometimes you have to respond to market, uh, market fluctuations and sell a property. Yeah, and don't feel bad about it once again. Like I know when I just sell, well, I've sold a whole bunch now, but my first few I had to sell, I worked so hard. My dream was to get to $5 million worth of real estate. This is back in 2014, yeah. 2005. I worked so hard to buy all these properties. Tim and I owned over 25 houses here in Calgary. And you know what? The market turned. And Tim and I have been through three downturns yeah. since, since we've got into real estate. So the market goes up and down. We didn't invest properly when we first started. That's why we teach people how to invest in real estate. And you know what? When I had to sell my first one, I was shattered. But once I sold it to him, there was so much relief. And like I didn't have that responsibility. That property was eating me alive because it wasn't cash flowing when I bought it. It was an emotional buy. It was a vacation property. And I was never going to live there anyway. So it was, yeah. like, <laughs> it was like, and you know what? It had equity in it. So I actually sold it. I didn't want to sell it. But I think I put forty or $60,000 in my pocket which helped me get through, you know, a couple of years of downturn there and then eventually going on to buy more property. So sometimes rejuggling or re repositioning your portfolio, it's not a bad thing, you know, sometimes you just got to let go, I guess. Yeah. And, and earlier this year, we sold off a number of rental properties for one of our clients. She was an older lady. Um, she was actually doing Airbnb on three places at the same time. She had retired from her job and because she was getting older, she was finding it very, very stressful to run these, these Airbnbs. She had uh, another rent, full-on rental property. So she just yeah. decided at that point just to liquidate everything, take the cash, and just coast into retirement. And now she's got yeah. you know, a huge, huge chunk of change in the bank, and she has no stress. Yeah, huge chunk, and she was stressed. And I'm, yeah. She's retired, so the Airbnb, Tim, she's been doing that for like 10 years. Yeah. Um, she owns, still owns a few properties in the waterfront, which is in a clear market. And you know what? She's totally at ease. We sold yeah. two properties this year for her and um, and she's comfortable. So you know what? It's all about timing. And we have to be honest with you guys. Real estate can be not painful, but it can be a pain in the backside. You know, you're going to have to deal with people. I mean, Tim and I are there when we buy our clients properties. If they have any problems we're there because we've seen everything that can happen with a rental property. Yep. I mean, it doesn't take a lot of work. The key is to rental properties is getting the right tenants that you can deal with. And at the end of the day, sometimes it just gets overwhelming for people, Tim. But when, when we see how much money there is, like I have some properties, I, I have a condo that I'd love to get rid of, but we already know if we sell it, that that property is probably going to go up another hundred thousand dollars within a three year period. So it's like, oh, do I sell it? And you know what? The reason why I want to sell it is because I got hit with a special assessment. So, and people are always wondering what's better. Is it a condo? Is it houses? Well, I can tell you houses. There is maintenance, but you should be buying turnkey properties or properties that you're going to renovate to a standard where it's going to maintain, maintain itself for a period of time. And the only thing with condos is that you are subject to special assessments over time. And if that gives you a headache, you're like, oh, get me out of here. And then you have the condo fees, right, as well. Yeah. So you could use that money somewhere else and do better sometimes. Yeah. So never sell a property unless you absolutely have to. But if you have to, it's a great way to get your debt under control and a great way to you know, move you forward with a sizable amount of money. So the next thing we're going to talk about is 
Use the cash flow from any rental properties you have to pay off debt. If you find yourself personally accumulating a lot of debt because of these rising costs, because of inflation, but you have rental properties in the background that are cash flowing, go ahead and use that cash flow to pay down the debt. Um, you, you're always better off paying that debt than just leaving the money in a savings account. Yeah, this is awesome to say this. I mean, at the end of the day, when you see interest rates go up like they did this year, sometimes you got to look at the debt. You got to say, well, you know, I could sell, like, like I know I'm in a position, I could sell one and pay off two. And so if I do that, my costs drop dramatically just on those three properties. And I'm like, I'm the kind of guy that always wants to hold on, hold on, hold on, right? But I'm also the guy that doesn't want to miss out. I want to go on holidays. I want to drive nice cars. I want, you know, I want more. So it's like, it's where you're at and where you're comfortable. And if you're feeling uncomfortable, if you are sleeping, if you're losing sleep at night, that is the first sign that you're overextended and that uh, you have to make changes. And that's how it normally turns out, right? So I need everybody to understand that. But at the same time, you should be looking at reaching the goal where you have at least one or two properties or three properties paid off and that you don't have mortgages. So you don't care what the interest rates are. And then those properties will feed your retirement later on. And that should be the goal for everybody out there. So if you can see yourself selling something, reducing debt, having less stress, guess what? We've seen investors that, Tim, they're in their 60s, right? Yeah. They're still buying investment properties. So don't think, oh, I'm selling now just to you know stay afloat. Life goes on, and if you like this game, you can get in and out of properties. We're ringing clients all the time. Hey, we got this one. We got some properties coming up soon that we're like, someone should jump on this. And most of the properties that come on uh, that we sell uh, don't even hit the market. They go to other investors. So um, you know what? If you're not there now, that's okay. It may be there in five years' time. Maybe there in 10 years' time. Um, and you might be thinking, well, I'm too old for that. No, you're not. You know, that's the, yeah. that's the best thing about real estate investing if you really want it. Yeah. So people often ask, you know, so can we find cash flowing, cash flowing properties in today's market? Well, we did an analysis on this property. We have pulled it up right here. This is a half duplex, uh, a suite of duplex in Glamorgan. Um, it was actually active early this week and it sold. So it wasn't one of our clients. It went into multiple offers and it sold. These are the numbers that we did the analysis on it as if you know one of our clients bought it. We were trying to sell it to some of our clients. Someone else came in and bought it. It actually sold for four twenty five, dollars so only five grand more than what we yeah. thought it would sell for. Um, and it, it would just skew the numbers a little bit at the bottom. Your total ROI would go down by one or 2%. That's about it by that four twenty five dollars uh, purchase price. But we'll go through some of these numbers there. At 420, it's an $84,000 down payment. Your mortgage amount is 336. That's $2,049 a month. And that's at today's interest rates, 5.49%, 25-year term. Um, taxes, 196. Insurance, 125. Maintenance, we put in $200 a month uh, because it was a fairly upgraded property. Vacancy, we always factor in one month uh, for every two years of vacancy. Generally, even now where your properties are never going to be vacant, we always factor in one month for every two years in case you want to keep it vacant, upgrade it, spruce it up a little bit, paint it, put carpet in, something like that. So the total income per month is $26.95. The rents we were seeing on this property were $18 up and $1,200 down. Now that $1,200 down could probably be a little higher, but we always err on the side of caution and, and put our numbers a little bit lower. So it's making $3,000 a month. Um, and that monthly cash flow is $305 a month. So that's just one property, one little property in one neighborhood in Calgary that if you bought it today, it's making $300 a month cash flow. And that cash flow, you can help yourself pay off some debt. If you had more than one, or if you had it for a number of years and the mortgage payment was lower, the cash flow would be higher. But this is just an example of a cash flow, a property that cash flows immediately upon purchase. Yeah, and the key here is the mortgage is getting paid down to every month and becoming wealthier. And then the appreciation, as we said earlier on in our presentation, the market's going to continue. There is no change to this market for at least three years. 
just because we cannot fix the inventory levels situation here in Calgary. They're, they, they can't build them fast enough. So um, these types of properties are going to be in demand. Rents will probably actually go up a little bit more if interest rates go up. And you know what? The appreciation will definitely be there on a property like this, anything under half a million dollars, because that's where the general population's affordability is, um, especially 10 people coming to the city, uh, new people to Canada. Um, and then you have people that are paying rents right now. Like you can see the rents they're paying. They're paying like 2200 for main floor in some cases. They're going to get sick of renting, right? So when these students can, you know, they get their jobs and they can get the ability to buy, they're going to stop renting as soon as possible. And then that's just going to spur on that market as yeah. well. So whoever wants to get into this market, we always, if you if you haven't got in, you start off small. That's the best way to do it. Um, and we see good times ahead for Calgary 100%. Yeah. And that cash flow is what you want to strive for on every single one of your rental properties because completely relevant to this seminar, that cash flow can help you pay off debt all day long. Yeah, the, one of the number one reasons why investors fail is because they're pulling money out of their back pockets. As soon as you do that, your days are limited um, for investing in real estate. So you need to make, and even if it's a hundred bucks, it has to cash flow. And if it's cash flowing, it's going to help you move forward. And that's what it's all about. Um, because you know what, Tim, could you imagine losing money and then putting up with a horrible tenant and then having to do repairs on top of that? Yeah. I mean, that is extreme worst case. We teach our clients how to avoid that completely and choose the right properties that are going to get you the right tenants uh, that are going to rent out for the amounts we're telling you and that are going to appreciate more than other properties. So that is the key. Yeah. So finally, <laughs> once you do pay off this debt, what do you do then? Well, Paying down the debt has to be part of your long-term goals. Um, we're not going to sit here and lecture people on, on what they should do with their money. But if you're in the real estate investment game, um, you want to consider your long-term financial goals when you start paying off this debt. Once they're under control, once the debt is under control, what are you going to do with that surplus all of a sudden? Because what was going to pay debt once it's paid off, now all of a sudden that's a surplus. Are you going to buy more rental properties? Are you going to just save it? Are you going to go move up an asset class, go into commercial as opposed to just rental properties, mm -hmm. single family homes? Um, so you need to do all of this debt pay down in, in, uh, in relation to what you want to do with your goals and what you want to do with your real estate investment. Yeah. And it's step by step. We want to tell you that it's not a get rich quick kind yeah. of system i mean it's getting first off you have to take action if you don't take action you don't stand and if you own property guess what you may have to reposition your portfolio and there's nothing wrong with that so you have to make these hard decisions we're here to help we get clients we've had clients come into our office wanting to buy 10 houses and we've had to walk them back out and tell them to go get a job first so We've seen it all, and I mean that is that is one extreme, Tim. But it's true. So we we have no problem telling you the truth, how to go about it, where you're working out where you're at, and and working out how to get you in a better position. And it's rewarding for us because we see people grow, right? We see newcomers to this country come here with nothing, renting, and then owning four or five houses after they've worked with us. So it's very, very rewarding. And sometimes it's sometimes you got to take a step backwards to take a step forward. And um, and sometimes it's totally worth it. Yeah. So keep an eye on those goals. And if you want to get into the real estate investment game, um, you want to have as much good debt, meaning mortgages, and avoid as much bad debt as you can, meaning credit card debt and stuff like that. So that brings our seminar to a close. We hope you guys got a lot out of it. Um, we run these things every two weeks. Like, as I said, we're going to try and get back into in person in, um, sorry, in October. Uh, but before we go, we want to briefly talk about some of the books that we've written. Um, this one on screen here is a, an ebook, One Million Reasons to Buy Real Estate. It's a very, very um, information packed book. It's short. It's a good read. It's a short read, but it tells you the fundamentals of investing in real estate and why we got into it in the first place. Yeah, it's awesome. It's free. You should read it. Download it for free. I'll put the link in the chat there. Just just go onto that website, crewrealestateinvesting.com, and it's a free download. The next one is our book, Fearless Real Estate. That one will cost you 20 bucks. 
Um, as you can see, we have a whole bunch of people on the front cover. The reason why we did that is because we wanted to showcase what our investors are doing, what how, what strategies they're using, how much money they're making. Uh, it, it also goes through stories about us, but it's not just about us. It's about our journey as realtors and buying hundreds of rental properties for our clients since 2006. And the reason why we showcase that is because we want to show you how easy it is to invest in real estate if you have the right team. And the key is team, because it does take a, a, a team to get you there because you know what, the market can be up, it can be down and, and you know what, you need that support, you need that guidance and you need ongoing education. And that's why we do these free um, presentations every second Tuesday, we change out topics, we have guest speakers, and we talk about what's relevant in the market today and how you can, basically, Tim was talking about long-term goals. The biggest long-term goal is, is that you should be living the life you deserve. So whatever that looks like, it may just look like going to the hockey game and sitting front row on the glass, or it may look like going to a five-star resort down in Mexico. I mean, Tim and I love doing all this stuff. Everyone's different. It's not a race. Um, but you know what? We're here to help you get there, get you there. And we've seen it work um, and it can work for you as okay. well. And this book has all the client stories of them doing those real estate strategies and them seeing success in what they're doing. And we help them along every step of the way. The third thing in here is our Fearless Real Estate Wealth Mastery Program. It's a course with over 100 hours of content. It's got all the, the forms and the guides and the, the tip sheets, everything you need to be successful in real estate investing. It's basically what we did is we drilled down all of the courses that we've taken over the years and we've spent you know, thousands and thousands of dollars on real estate investment courses. We drilled it down to the relevant portions that you need to get, get ahead investing in real estate. Yeah, we never wanted to charge too much for it. We never wanted to uh, put this on anybody, but we find that the investors that are doing it are doing great. They're killing it. And most of them, Tim, end up with a large portfolio. Well, the goal of this program was to create a million dollars worth of equity for uh, the individuals that do the course. By all means, you don't, do not have to do it. You can simply contact us. We'll get into that in a second. And um, we can show you ways to actually keep learning. Yeah, the next thing we want to talk about is our, our YouTube channel, Crew yeah. TV. Of course, I left the slide out again. Yeah. Uh, Crew TV, you can get to it at crewtv.com. It has hours and hours of stories about our clients' success. It has interviews. It has walkthroughs. It has tons and tons of information that we'll, you can use to get ahead investing in real estate. Yeah, no, Crew TV, it's free. It's on YouTube. And you know what? We go out and we show you properties we're buying. We do case studies. We interview investors. Uh, and then we give you crazy tips that you can make money with investing in real estate. Um, the next thing we'll show you is if you do think real estate investing is for you, you know what, first off, we ask you to go to work tomorrow, tell all your friends about us. I think we're at 5,600 members on Meetup. We're trying to get to 6,000 by the end of the year. If you can help us do, do that, that would be fantastic. And you know, if you think it's for you, just send us an email. I think Shireen put it in there. And the best way to get hold of us is by email. I know after we do these presentations, we already have phone calls to attend. So yes, email, we will schedule a call with you. That would be awesome. And um, you know what, if not, we hope that you can make our next presentation. It will be in two weeks time. We're not sure of the topic yet, but it, it will be exciting. And um, we hope to see you again. Yeah, so we want to help you along with your real estate investing journey. We want to help you get ahead, find cash flowing properties, find the right strategy that's right for you. So if you're interested, Give us an email and we can get you started right away. Have a good night. Thank you very much and have a good night.